Hello everyone, welcome back to another Caldera tutorial. And in this video, we're gonna be covering Caldera operations. Now, before we actually get into how to run an operation, let's just make sure that we all have the same understanding of what an operation actually is. So we've talked about agents, abilities, and adversaries already in previous videos. And to run an operation, you basically need all three of those things. So you need an agent that's actually installed on the target that you want to run the operation against. You need abilities, which are just the, you know, kind of the commands that are going to be run um, by the operation. And then you need the adversaries. Now, remember, this is just, you know, a it's a grouping of abilities. You know, so you might have five, ten or, or more. You could have way more than that. But it, it's a grouping of abilities that make up the attack chain of an adversary. And they're put into a certain order that, you know, makes sense on on how an adversary would actually execute that attack. And then you have your operations. And your operations is when you're actually running those attacks, when you're actually executing those commands on the target workstations that you put those agents on. So now that we talked about that, let's go ahead and get into how to actually run the operations. So you're looking at the Caldera version 5 dashboard right now. Uh, if you're on Caldera version 5, you can click the Manage Operations button. If you're on Caldera version 5 or a um, prior version, you can just hit this Operations button on the, um, the left tab over here. Now, in Caldera version 5, there's only one button to play with here. And so it's just this New Operations button. So let's click on this. And we have a, uh, a few configurations that we have to uh, set here. So the first is just the operation name. The operation name should be something that tells you, you know, what you were doing here. Like what adversary profile were you actually running? So if you're doing some type of, you know, exfiltration, maybe you want to call it exfil. Um, just something that will, you know, remind you what you were actually doing with this operation. Because, you know, you, you might have, you know, 10 or 15 operations running at the same time. And it might get confusing on, you know, what each one was doing. But in this case, we're just going to call it demo. Now, the adversary, this is where you actually choose what adversary profile do I want to run as a part of this operation. And in this case, we'll just choose uh, Thief. Back sources can be a whole other video. And so for this demo, we're just going to keep fact source as basic. Now, we also have groups here. And groups kind of go back to what we talked about during the agent tutorial. And so I'm going to just very quickly go to the agents tab here. And you'll see that we currently have two agents running. Um, one of them is a part of group network one, and the other is a part of group network two. And in a, in a more realistic scenario right here, you know, you might have five agents that are part of network one and, you know, five agents that are part of network two. But just for demo purposes, we're just using, you know, a group of network two and network one with only one agent on each. But the idea here is that you might have uh, multiple assessments going on at the same time. And you have five agents that are installed on, you know, network one or company one. And you might have five that are installed on network two or company two. You obviously don't want to run or you likely don't want to run the exact same um, adversaries against each um, network. And so this is a way of actually keeping them separate and only running them against one of those groups of agents. And so again, back in here, we'll rename this demo. I will run thief. Um, so if I choose all groups, it's going to run against every single agent that's a part of both network one and network two and any other groups that you might have. And you can individually select um, just groups though, right? So if I only want to against run, if I only want to run it against network one, I can do that. If I only want to run it against network two, I can do that. So in this case, we'll just choose network one. Now we also have planners. Planners can be a whole, uh, a whole other video as well. So we'll just keep it at atomic for now. And atomic just means that the abilities are going to run one by one, one after the other in the order that they're in the adversary profile. So just a very simple way of logically running our plan. We have the obfuscators over here, which will basically let you, you know, use base 64 encoding or something like that. Or you can just send the commands over in plain text, but just to, uh, just to obfuscate your commands before you actually send them to the agent. Now we have this option for autonomous, and this just basically means, do you want to run all of these commands one after the other automatically, 
or do you want to pause and require manual approval between each command that runs? We have parsers. Parsers, again, can be a whole other video. So we're just going to say use default parser for right now and uh, skip over this one. Now we have auto close. So after the operation runs the final ability within that adversary profile, do you want to just keep the operation open or do you want to close it automatically and, you know, also automatically run those cleanup commands? And then we have the run state. So once I press this start button right here, kind of similar to um, autonomous, do I want this to, do I want this operation to run automatically right away as soon as I hit start? Or do I want it to pause on start and wait for me to say, okay, now you can go. And then we have this um, this jitter section here. Um, by default, it's two to eight seconds. This just adds additional variance to how often the agent checks back into the Caldera server. Um, so you can you know you can you can make that change within the agents tab itself. But when you actually go to run the operation, you can add even more variance to that from the operations tab. So let's just press start and kind of get an idea of, of what you'll see when you actually run this operation. Now, the first thing that you see here is not super helpful in, in this demo because we only have one agent running on one workstation. But if you had multiple agents running on multiple workstations, you would get a little bit of a network topology here. And you would see, you know, where all of your agents are currently running and on what workstations. Uh, but in this case, we can just click on this uh, button right here and we can get some information, you know, about the agent itself, what IP address it's running on and things like that. And then you can also keep track of um, what actions is the agent currently running. Uh, but like I said, this isn't extremely helpful because uh, we're in this demo right now where we're only running on one host. And so we're just going to hit this minus button up here. And now you can kind of see... Um, what's going on down here, right? So um, let's just start by clicking operation details. Um, nothing, nothing new here. Um, this is basically just all of the settings that you just chose when you went to run this operation. Uh, but everything that you see down here is, is more interesting. So uh, first thing you'll see is, you know, the exact time that your command was run. And again, right now, as you know, it'll say it's running, you know, every 10 seconds. Um, but in reality, you know, these, these timestamps will be, you know, much more um, spread out if you're on an actual operation. You have your status. So in this case, we have all of these successful commands. You can also see failed. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of see the status of, you know, did that ability actually run? And if so, uh, was it successful or did it fail? You have the name of every single ability that's a part of that adversary profile. Um, so you can, you know, kind of get an idea of like exactly what is running um, by reading the ability names here. You have the tactic that's obviously mapped back to the MITRE ATT&CK uh, framework. You have the agent that it's running on. You have the host, the process ID. And then probably the most exciting over here is that you can actually see the exact command that's being run. So in this case, you see that for this create staging directory step, we are running this make directory command right here. And you can also see the output right now. Um, so in this case, we have a fact as our output and again, we're kind of going to, uh, we'll save facts for another video, but the output is important. Now you can see that the operation completed. And so you can kind of, you know, follow all of these steps right here. And we had that, um, that keep running option right here. So we have to actually go ahead and manually press stop right now. And what this is going to do is run these cleanup commands. And what you'll see happens down here is that we have two additional commands that run. And these basically go back through and they, they, they modify the changes that were made and basically make it so that they never happened before. So they, they, if you make a directory, it'll delete the directory for you. Um, if you move stuff around, it'll move it back for you. So that's what the actual um, cleanup commands are doing for you. And you can go ahead and you can view, you know, exactly what's actually happening. So in this case, you know, we're removing the uh, zip file that we made. And in this file or in this step, we are uh, removing the directory that we made early on. So... Uh, that is how Caldera operations work. I hope this was a helpful video and thank you for watching. All right. Hey everyone, me from the future. So 
I realized that I forgot to show a few important features of operations. Um, so I wanted to get those to you and put those in the, uh, the second half of this video. So the first thing that I want to show is that um, while you're creating your operation, you can choose either manual or autonomous, but you can also actually change that uh, mid operation. So uh, just by flipping this button back and forth here, you can change from autonomous to manual operations. When you're in manual mode, basically what happens is it'll say paused right here. And then you can hover over this view command to see the command that it wants to run. And then you can either approve or discard it. If you approve it, it'll just run like any other normal command. Uh, if you discard it, it will just skip the command and go to the next one. Or I should be saying abilities. It'll, it'll run the ability or it will skip the ability. Another thing that you can do is um, you can actually do your... Uh, obfuscation right from here so you don't have to choose this before the operation starts you can choose it towards the middle of your operation and so if i go ahead and run this this will run in plain text because i didn't choose base 64 before i uh before i ran it but if i approve this the next command that pops up will actually be base 64 encoded uh this failed because the directory is already created but you can see here that if i approve this um this is actually the command that's being run now so this is the uh base 64 command um, that we're executing on the host now. So that's how you can switch in between uh, manual and autonomous mode and also selecting um, obfuscators directly from the operations tab rather than selecting them beforehand. It also shows you the, uh, the plain text version right below it. Uh, a few other things worth looking at. Uh, you can actually create your own manual commands. So you can just go ahead and, and choose a manual command. You can come down here and choose the agent that you wanna run it on. And then I would say, uh, who am I? And you can just go ahead and run these commands. It's actually because I'm in manual mode. So let me switch back to autonomous. I'm going to have to approve this, but um, I can approve this command and it'll just run this who am I and show me the output. Um, also something to look at would be this potential link button right here. So if you start an operation but you're missing an ability for whatever reason or maybe you created an adversary profile but you uh, forgot to put a certain ability into it you can actually edit that here so you can just go ahead and you know search for whatever you're looking for you can you know type it in here um sure what shell is running um and you can just add that link and then that will also run within your operation as well Um, the other thing to note is that you can look at filters here and you can see, you know, okay, if you only, if you have, you know, hundreds of abilities being run right now, you know, obviously this isn't super important right now, but if you had a bunch of abilities, you might want to filter by, you know, which ones were successful, uh, you know, which ones failed, which ones timed out. Um, if you have multiple agents that are running, you might want to know what agents are running, what agents are running, which commands and things like that. And so there's also, you know, a way to kind of filter down um the information that you're looking at here there's also a download report button right here that you can use to you know download a um kind of a report in json format of, of what you've run already um so that looks something like this and then additionally you can actually also go to sorry you can also go to um this debrief plugin right here and you can actually use this to download um a pdf report of your operation as well so if i choose download that will look something like this so you kind of have like a pd a pdf version of that json uh, with all the information included from your operation so again i forgot to mention these in the uh the first part of this video so i wanted to come back and just make sure that you were all aware of some of the additional things that you can do within Caldera. Um, so yeah, hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.